Okay, so you want to learn how to do this wave transition. Well, let me show you how. I use this transition on this fishing game I'm working on. You can check out the dev log on my channel. Okay, so the first thing you want to do is create a user interface node and let's change the type to be color rect. Um, this is good. Uh, and then just set the color of what you want the wave to be. Now we're going to be creating a material a new shader material because we're going to be creating the shader from scratch. So new shader, click on this, and right away you see that there is an error. This is because you need to define the shader type. The canvas item means it's a 2D shader, and we want the render mode to be unshaded. Uh, that means that it's not affected by light at all. What we want to create is a cutoff value that we can use to adjust how much of the screen that we're cutting off. So if the cutoff value is zero, then we're cutting off none of the screen. And as it slowly goes up to one, we cut it off. Let's first create a uniform float cutoff with a hint range from zero to one. So what this is, is it exposes the parameter to the editor that we can adjust from zero to one. So what we want to do is if it's zero, we're not cutting off anything and we go up to one and we're cutting off the whole screen. So we can do that in a fragment shader. So the fragment shader works on every single pixel on the screen. So what we want to create is a value that keeps track of where we are on the screen. We can use the screen UV for that, which is a 2D vector that stores where you are specifically in the viewport. So on the top left of the viewport, it's going to be 0, 0, and the bottom right, it's going to be 1, 1. And so we just want the X value because we want to keep track of it horizontally. And I want to do it from right to left, have 0 on the right and 1 on the left. So I'm just going to subtract it it from one. Let's keep track of the alpha. So alpha is this transparency because how we're cutting off is we're really just setting the pixels to be transparent. Let's get the color. To get the color of the color rect, we can just use this built-in color variable and get the three color channels. Now this part is very simple. So if value is less than cutoff, we set the alpha to equal zero. And then we reset the color to be color and this new alpha. And let's save this as a transition tutorial. And you see that if we change the cutoff, what we get is this nice transition. But you'll notice that when it's zero, it doesn't immediately start changing. It's only when it gets to around here that it starts cutting off. And once we hit one, it still goes past, which is weird because you'd think it's zero to 100%. Well, that's because the editor is actually not seeing this as a viewport, but seeing this entire editor region as a viewport. So I'm not really sure what other way there is to work around this, except for just matching the editor viewport with the window, which is kind of an ugly solution, but there's a, uh, but I don't know what other way to do it. So now if we match it like this. You can see that it actually matches it pretty much perfectly. So this is good for, as you're writing a shader and you're debugging, you can see it reflecting correctly. Now let's move on to the next section. What we want to see is a wave right along the side. So let's do this. Let's define a size of the wave, wave size. And let's set the hint range to be from zero to one as well. So what this is going to be is a percentage, a percentage of the screen for how big the wave is going to be. So if it's equal to 0 0.1, the wave is going to be 10% of the screen. So let's set another cutoff value and call this the wave cutoff value. And what this is, is essentially indicating where you're going to cut off the wave and then you're, when you're going to cut off the base of the wave. So let's do this. This is how you have to test in shaders is you just have to change things and you have to check it visually. So this section is the base of the wave when the wave size is zero. 
And as you increase the wave, you can see that there's this section that we're increasing, which is the wave. So that's fine and all, but let's get the waves going. So here's how we're going to do this. What we want is a sine wave cutting along the length of the wave. And how we're going to do that is we're going to get a percentage. So essentially, the sine wave is at the very bottom. We're going to cut off 100%. And we go up to the top, it's going to be cutting off none of the waves, so 0%. And down to 100%, up to 0, down to 100. Or you can think about it a different way, where we have 0% of the wave up to 100% of the wave, 0% of the wave up to 100%. It's just how you do the math. So we need to convert the sine wave into a percentage. So to do that, let's create another float. Wave cutoff percentage percent goals screen uv dot y. Instead of the x, we're getting 0 to 1 from the top to the bottom of the screen. But the range of sine is from negative 1 to 1, right? If you remember from your trigonometry class. In order to convert sine from negative 1 to 1, what we can do is add 1 and divide by 2. Because when you add 1, instead of going from negative 1 to 1, it becomes 0 to 2. And to turn 0 to 2 from 0 to 1, you just divide by 2. So now we got a percent. And how do we use this? We can just multiply it by the wave size and look. So now you can see that it's slowly cutting down. And really, this is just a really big sine wave. So we can see it's working. This is sort of what we want, but the sine waves are too big. So how do we adjust the sine waves? We can create some parameters. So I'm just gonna copy this and the frequency and the speed. So how do we change the frequency? Again, if you remember from your math class, if we divide, by a certain amount, we can adjust the frequency. Ah, so now we're getting somewhere. We can see the waves. So you see if I adjust the frequency, you can kind of see how I can adjust how frequent the sine wave is. So this is pretty good. And how do we adjust the speed? So in shaders, anytime you want something to move, you're going to use the inbuilt time variable. So this just keeps track of how much time has passed. So now you're seeing that start to move, which is already pretty great. And it's a little slow, so we can adjust it by multiplying it by some parameter. Look, now it's going. Slow it down, speed it up, whatever you prefer. So this is pretty good already. Now when you adjust the cutoff, you kind of have this wave, this moving wave. It can already kind of create a transition. Zhoop, zhoop. But we hit another problem. When we go all the way down, you see that the wave is still here. That's because we're cutting off to the cutoff, but we're not taking into consideration how big the wave is. So this is an easy fix. What we do is we just scale the value. So let's take this and multiply it by one minus the wave size. So now we're taking into consideration how big the wave is. And so you see that that fixed the problem already. So now, zero, and then all the way to one, you're cutting off the whole entire wave. Now, if you want it just to be like this, this is already good enough for transition. So you can use the animation player to animate the cutoff from one all the way to zero, to transition out or transition in, and then transition back out just like that. But sometimes the background is also blue and you kind of don't have a lot of contrast. Uh, along the length of the wave. So I like to add some foam. So let's see how to do that. Let's add two new parameters, the wave size and the foam color. So let's set the foam color to white for now. Now here's what we want to do. So right now, how do we keep track of the edge of the wave? We do that using the wave cutoff value. What we want is a slight offset to the wave cutoff value to add on this extra layer of foam. So what we can do is you can check whether or not it's in between this wave cutoff value and this wave offset. So let's create another condition on this block. So here we already know that it's less than the wave cutoff value. So anything out here is within this conditional block. So all these pixels are the alpha is zero, so it's transparent. But 
we want to check if it's in this section, but also within this offset. So if the value is less than the wave cutoff value, but also greater than the wave cutoff value plus the offset, which is the wave foam size, or, or minus the wave foam size. We can set the color to equal the foam color. Right, we wanna just use the RGB. Now you see this is not really working, but that's because it's doing this, but then right after it's immediately setting the alpha to zero. So we need to create an else statement here. Um, let's see, ah, there we go. So now we can adjust the foam size and also the color. So I think having it be this color, but a little bit lighter, this is pretty good. And the foam size is pretty good. So now we set the, the speed. And now we get this cutoff. But we run into the same issue as we did before, where all the way on the left side, we're not accounting for the size of the foam. So again, we can just subtract away foam size and the problem is fixed. So now this is pretty much it. One last thing that I like to do is this is all one solid color and I like to have a little bit of a gradient. So what we can do is we can kind of adjust the green value of here to make it a little bit more kind of teal or turquoise. And we can do that by adjusting this color value right here. So let's add VEC3 um, and add the value to the green and get yeah, that's a little bit too harsh, so let's divide this maybe. Yeah, and then we get this light kind of transition, if you would like. So now, when we start transitioning in, we have this nice gradient, and it comes out just like that. But you may ask, how do I create this transition in the game? That's pretty easy to do, too. What we can do is we can add an animation player. And let's call this the animation transition out. I like to use Bezier curves for this so we can have a nice smooth easing transition. But you'll notice that the shader parameter doesn't actually show up. No problem. We can just put it in manually. So what you can use is material shader param cutoff. And let's create an animation for this. Let's start from the zero and go all the way up to one. Value's a little bit off, so let's change this to one. Now when we play this, it's a transition. You can kind of ease it out a little bit more if you want to. Um, you can also you know, insert another key if you wanted to do it like that. It's a little weird. But in any case, you can adjust this how you'd like to. So I created this little test scene with a button and a background and this transition that we added. And I added the simple script. So first, we play the transition when the scene is loaded. So we'll do this transition out. And whenever you switch a scene, you can call the switch scene function with the scene path. It plays the transition out backwards and it waits until the animation is finished and then you switch the scene. So here's what it looks like. Click transition, transition in, transition out, transition in, transition out. Now, you might have this problem where you can kind of spam click the button and it's doing these multiple transitions. So that's definitely what you don't want. So what you can do is you can change the transition, this mouse filter. So what you want to do is have it stop. So basically, when the transition is going over, you can't click anything. But then you come into this problem where you can't click it at all. Because technically, the wave transition is still over the screen, but it's transparent. So here's a solution to that. So you can wait till the animation is finished, and you can set the visibility to be false. And then when you switch 
the scene. You can set the visibility to equal true again. So what you get is you can click it, but then you can't spam click it. If this tutorial was helpful to you, please consider leaving a like. If you want to see devlog content, as well as other Godot tutorials, please consider subscribing. See you next time.